The Chiefs defense needs to build upon what they did against the Raiders in Week 17 as the Colts come to town for the divisional playoff. I got the film room coming for you right here. Hi everyone, I'm Ryan and this is me going rogue on the NFL, the Chiefs, and these divisional playoffs. We have a ton to talk about this week. We're going to get right into it because the defense has to take what they did in Week 17 against the Raiders when the Raiders came to Arrowhead and take that environmental effort and put it right back out there on the field when the Colts get to town. Colts are the hottest team in football right now. A lot of folks are picking against these Chiefs even though they're at home. Uh, I think the fan base will play a, a particular factor in the stadium itself, but the Chiefs defense has to buck up and do what they did last week. And that really is that they took a Raiders team that came to town probably not 100% concentrated. They were certainly outmatched. Uh, their record through the season really reflected that. And what you saw was a performance that the Chiefs did uh, what they had to do. A, a team that should be a first round uh, buy, be the first seed should destroy a team at home. And what they did was particularly effective on defense, got them out to a good start. Uh, they were opportunistic, and they beat down a team that they should have beaten down. Uh, at the end of the day, the defense did what it was supposed to. Uh, played a little bit better than it has recently, but again, that's a part of, of the level of competition they had from the Raiders. They had to take that energy, take that focus, and move it forward towards these Colts that are a much more substantial team. They've been on a, a complete run, uh, won 10 out of 11 games, and they are really, really formidable at this point. We're going to talk about all the aspects of the Colts game coming up here in the game plan video in a day or two. Real quick, want to say thank you to all the followers that have been here as we grow. You guys have been great, so welcome back. If you're new, make sure you hit that subscribe and the notification bell so you know when a new video goes up. Leave your comment below in the conversation and leave that thumbs up if you like what you're seeing. I also want to let everybody know that the uh, link is going to be down below to the new RGR gear store. I have all kinds of stuff, t-shirts, hoodies, and coffee cups, because I know a lot of you have been asking for them. So check out the gear store for right now. Let's take a look at what the Chiefs did against the Raiders. It'll be evident this week, but it was very much important last week against the Raiders. I'm sorry, two weeks ago against the, against the Raiders is the way it came down. And that is that the front seven has to get pressure. And the front line itself, uh, we'll talk about the off-ball linebackers here in a minute, but prime pressure was provided by Justin Houston and Chris Jones. Three pressures apiece, a couple of sacks for Houston. I think one and a half officially, but according to PFF, it was two. Um, Chris Jones' streak did come to an end, but he still provided a lot of push in the pocket, uh, jumped in some gaps, and, and was generally a threat. And that's what they're going to need against those Colts coming up. And what you got was uh, that kind of three-tiered approach. A guy in the middle like Jones that can take on doubles, break them down, uh, as well as penetrate through gaps. And get in the quarterback's face. That will be very, very important next week. But it allows the outside guys to work. And both Justin Houston, uh, who obviously plays with a little bit more power uh, than speed as he used to in years past, after that knee injury in particular, uh, has been having a great December. Uh, breaking down pass rush, breaking down the run game. Uh, obviously, he holds up that edge like nobody else. That will come in very handy next week against the Colts. We'll talk about that in the game plan. Uh, but setting the edge is something Justin Houston does very, very well for an outside linebacker, stand-up linebacker. And on the other side, D. Ford provides that speed. That three-pronged attack is what's going to be important next week. And they worked out very well this week. Had some great play by Alan Bailey as well. They forced a couple of turnovers out of that front seven that really, really came to pass and changed the tide of that game. We're going to look at a couple of those plays as we're going through this. And again, remember that the turnovers led to a lead that the defense provided. Uh, not just the offense doing what it does, although they were very efficient that day as well. And at that point, the front seven was the leader of, of the, the pack there. Uh, we're going to look at a couple of plays from the other positions as well. But remember that this is the where it all has to start next week as well. Now, one of the biggest plays of the game was provided by Reggie Ragland. Uh, in a rare coverage play that broke down, and he was able to really turn the tide. Uh, he's going to take a lot of static for getting caught by an offensive lineman. But Reggie's pick... 
uh, right in the middle of the defense, playing that shallow zone, allowing him to accelerate. He looked like he was running pretty well on a knee that's been probably troublesome all season. But I think. what you saw him do is play his position, react, and be instinctual. In that particular play, and we'll look at that here in a second, uh, that's what it comes down to. Here we're going to highlight Reggie. He's off the ball and just watching the quarterback's eyes. Drops to his zone. Unfortunately, so does D Ford, who I think was out of position. Reggie makes that nice under move, grabs the ball, and he's off to the races. Now, he is rumbling about as fast as he can go. He's looking decent until right at the end where 77 catches him. Now, on the opposite view, you're going to see him just drop to his wide curl zone, sit down, and just watch the quarterback. He comes underneath as the crosser comes from Jordy Nelson. And that's where he makes his play. Nice heads-up play from Reggie Ragland. Haven't seen that in the past game much. It's a great sign. Now, on top of that play, what you also saw was some good things in the run game and some bad things. Uh, we have to make sure that they build upon what they did well. It was not all roses against the Raiders. There were some times, like this, where they attacked downhill and were aggressive at the ball carrier trying to get to him first, uh, making their read, and going. And that's what this defense has been screaming for all season. As we see them be aggressive, they play better. On the flip side, there are plays also where they, again, felt hesitant, got to the hole, kind of sat down in it, did not explode through. We're going to focus on Anthony Hitchens here, and he's going to slide over, and despite having an angle on his blocker, 77, he just kind of stops there, dead in the hole, waiting for the ball carrier to come to him. Alan Bailey bailed him out and actually caused a fumble here, but this is what happens. He comes down, and if he were to just attack, this particular play would have ended up for a loss. He comes down, has the angle on 77's back turned, and just slows down. This is hesitation. When we look at the next play, we'll look at Reggie Ragland here. And Reggie's going to do a very similar thing. Uh, he knows that he just has to key on the back because Hitchens has the other side. He comes down and just shuffles, shuffles, shuffles. Because of his lack of aggressiveness, he allows the tight end to come down and make the block. This angle that's even more clear. Watch 85 as he comes out and just basically shadow boxes him. If Reggie attacks right here, he has the play made for a loss. And that's what they need to see from Reggie Ragland. Now, on the backside in the secondary, they got some opportunistic plays as well. Uh, the big one that we'll look at first is going to be that pick six from Dan Sorensen. Uh, in his position, doing his job, credit to him, uh, he made the play. It, it was a blown play, though. We can't over-exaggerate that this is some miracle play on Sorensen's part. He did his job. He was in the right place at the right time. But this is a team that <laughs> they were completely discombobulated. Jared Cook didn't even realize that it was a passing play. Not only did he not run a route, but he really gave up on even trying to block anybody because he thought it was a run away. Uh, and that provided this particular play to be a possibility for Sorensen. He made the most of it, but that is because of a major mistake on the offense's part. And the key part is, it shows you just what else is going on in that secondary. A lot of confusion. Jordan Lucas playing deep, very confused about what his assignment was and how to line everybody else up. Eric Berry looks like he's practicing, so that's going to play a factor as well. Let's take a look at that play right here. This is the pick, but there's total confusion before the play. Raglan has to walk out. Lucas goes down. There's four guys at this side. They have no idea how they're supposed to be aligned in coverage. And luckily, the Raiders bail him out because Cook isn't paying attention. It's a pass play. He's not there. Sorensen is. He grabs it and takes it for the distance. But the bigger issue is the Chiefs were not aligned to defend that. Should have been a pass to the other side. Got to get that fixed. And lastly, this defense has to continue to increase its, its juice. Uh, it has to take Ward out there. Uh, I don't think Skandrick is a starter anymore. I, I think Javarius Ward has taken that position with Nelson and Fuller. Ward in particular, I thought, did a good job in recovering from his first outing, where he was taken advantage of quite often, uh, playing more physical, playing tighter coverage, being able to stay in the hip pocket better. And that's what they have to have from him, because this, this team needs some spark out of this secondary. They'll get some with Barry coming back, but it's got to come from the corner position as well. Uh, I think Nelson has played well through the season. Uh, I think he's aggressive, but he has his limitations as well, especially deep speed. Uh, so they have to have Ward continue to improve. You're going to see some Tremont Smith as well, but Ward is really going to be the focus for the new blood on this defense. Now, at the end of the day, 
they have to continue and take that next step forward from where they were against the Raiders. Again, the level of competition is going up dramatically, but they have the ability to respond. They've had some good rest. They had the week off. They've had plenty of time to game plan and look at the film. And I think that puts the Chiefs in a very good position. But this defense is going to be the key. Can they get stops? Can they slow down the Colts offense in order to let the Chiefs offense do what it does? That's what we're going to talk about in the next video. So at this point, I just want to say thank you for all your time. If you like what I'm doing, leave that thumbs up down below. And I will talk to you next time.